These children are just so precious. The other day, um, I was at home and I had had a pretty productive day and it got to be about dinner time and I was um, just feeling like I was tired. It was that kind of tired where boiling noodles felt like it was too difficult. So I, <laughs> I waited about an hour to see if I would be able to come up with something for dinner and it got to be about 6.30. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to go pray about this because it just, <laughs> it was, I just felt so tired. So I went and just said a quick prayer. I just said, God, I, I want to be able to feed my family dinner and um, take care of them. I'm feeling tired. Can you just help me out with making dinner? And I, that was it. It was just a quick prayer. And I, I laid there where I, was, where I was for a moment later. And Mason walked in and he goes, Mom, when can I make waffles? And I was like, well, son, you can make them right now. I don't feel like making dinner. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I didn't even realize at the moment what, what this was. And he goes, okay. And he walks out and he goes about the business of making waffles. And then I jumped up very quickly because I was picturing waffle batter all over my kitchen. So I got the energy to jump up. And, but by the time I made it towards the kitchen, I stopped myself and I realized... Um, that I needed to probably make him, let him make waffles. And so I said, I'm just going to ask my husband if he's okay with this. So I said, husband, are you okay with, with waffles, with Mason making waffles? And he goes, yeah, we can warm up that chicken you made a few days ago, and we can have chicken and waffles. And I was like, now I, then I knew that God was working in our family to answer this prayer, because my husband does not like warmed up chicken that's been reheated. <laughs> so... For him to have that idea, that was that was from God, and and I just I just stopped and I just thought, God, you are just so good. You are so good, and He just continually amazes me in the way that he, that He works about our minds and our hearts to to answer these prayers and to, to do these things that we can't even fathom. And I just thought He was so He was so good. If you can pull up. Um, John 3, 8, please. Jesus gives a very good explanation to, to Nicodemus, who he was having a conversation with at the time. Um, Nicodemus was a religious ruler. He was trying to make sense um, based off of his knowledge of what he was seeing from Jesus. And this was the answer Jesus gave to him. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. And it's just such a good explanation um, in this, that word wind that he used, Nicodemus would have recognized as the spirit or breath or essentially like God at work. And I was thinking about that verse and I just thought about how sometimes, how Mason, this wouldn't have been a difficult thing for Mason to say yes to. It wouldn't have been a difficult thing for him. He has a sweetheart, so it wouldn't have been hard for him to answer that calling for God that God put on him in his heart to go and make waffles. It wouldn't have been hard for him. But sometimes God will bring us to a place that's a little bit more uncomfortable. And I was thinking about some of those moments that I've had in my own personal walk. And um, I was just thinking about how sometimes that can feel and, you know, how we just need to trust God. I've been reading the book of Ezekiel and very just loving reading and studying the book of Ezekiel lately. And um, it's very reassuring and it's very encouraging to me because as you read through the book of Ezekiel, you see so many instances where Ezekiel was called into a place that could have been very uncomfortable for him and it could have been become a struggle for him, but you just consistently see him being faithful to what God calls him into doing um, Ezekiel was a prophet. He was a prophet for the, the um, exiles in Babylon. He was called to give a message of judgment to people who were being very rebellious. They were worshiping idols, um, and they were not seeking after God. They were no longer seeking after God. So he was called to give this message of judgment that, that God was going to judge them for their actions. And eventually judgment on the surrounding nations and messages of redemption. So 
But as he called him to doing this, um, God commanded him that he give these messages, these prophetic, prophetic messages while being mute. So that means he, he wasn't able to say his prophetic message. He wasn't able to say, thus saith the Lord, and then say what the Lord said. He was giving these sign acts in the beginning um, to, to give these messages of judgment. And the sign acts at that point were, would have had, had as much weight as any prophetic message that started with, thus saith the Lord. So, so as he was doing these sign acts, as I read these sign acts that God commanded him to do to give these messages of judgment, um, I just can't help but think that it would have been easy for him to be, to be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, I'm going to paraphrase because otherwise I'll end up reading the whole book of Ezekiel to you. But one of the, one of the sign acts he gave was um, God wanted him to create a model of the city of Jerusalem and then lay siege to it and lie on his left side for 390 days, his right side for 40 days. And um, in that time, that's a lot of time of laying on your side, God took care of him. He gave him the instructions for what to eat or what to drink. And then when it came to what to eat, he instructed him to make a mixed grain bread and then bake that mixed grain bread with dung that came from man. And that was when Ezekiel was, he had some questions, but he took those questions to God instead of, you know, reasoning with his re human logic and thinking, well, this isn't something that God, this is against the law. Like I, he was from a priestly family, so he wouldn't have defiled his body. But when he had that question, he took it to God and God gave him an answer. He said, well, I'll give you animal dung instead to bake your bread with. So I don't know if that's what he wanted to, the answer he wanted, but... <laughs> But um, again, he was faithful, and he did as he was commanded to do. And as, as you just read through, there are so many instances of him doing these, giving these messages, and they were important messages. And it's just so encouraging to see somebody who, who just, who didn't, you know, he was a prophet. He had the Spirit of God upon him, and he was suffused with the, the Spirit of God, but he was still a man. He still had a sinful nature, and it was still possible for him to make mistakes. So as I read it, I, it's encouraging to me. And God, God helped Ezekiel with this before he started giving these messages. If you can pull up um, Ezekiel 2.6, please. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, through bri though briars and thorns be with thee. And thou dost dwell among scorpions, be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks. Though they be a rebellious house. Can you turn to the next one, please? And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee, be not thou rebellious, like that rebellious house, open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. So he had given them Ezekiel this before he started out giving these messages. So I'm, God doesn't say things that aren't necessary, so I'm sure that this was something that was necessary for Ezekiel to hear before he started out his time and being a prophet for Jesus, for, for God. And then if we can jump to 20, Ezekiel 24, 15. Also the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with a stroke, yet neither shalt thou mourn nor weep, neither shalt thy tears run down. Forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead. Bind the tire of thine head upon thee, and put thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. So I spake unto the people in the morning, and at even my wife died, and I did in the morning as I was commanded. And as I read this, it's just, it's a little bit, you just, I don't know, I just feel very emotional as I read that. Um, and I can see that could have been something that could have been a struggle for Ezekiel, because while it doesn't say in this book that Ezekiel, how Ezekiel felt about his wife, God described her as the desire of thine eye, so I'm guessing he at least liked her. And if he, 
commanded that he not mourn his wife publicly to show a sign of how God was going to not mourn for this people that he had placed judgment on for their iniquity, um, that he would have otherwise mourned his wife. And again, it was a very important message to give, and, it, and God had, had given this message to him, but looking at it from a, in a human perspective, it would have been very easy for that to be a struggle, but he was faithful all through the book in all of these, all of these messages that God wanted him to share. So, again, I'm, I'm not, I would never compare myself to a prophet. I'm, I'm definitely not that. But, again, I know he was, he was also a man, so it's just an encouraging book. And as I was, so going to my own story, I guess, um, prior to the lockdown, so this was last year, I, I don't know when we shut down, but I want to say it was March or April, but prior to that, I was asked to be a Sunday school teacher for the first time, which I was so excited about. I just felt a, a burden for the kids. I loved the kids, and I wanted to be, I wanted to be in the children's ministry. So I was asked to be a Sunday school teacher for the first time, and, a, and I was just so excited. But before I could even teach my first lesson, we had the shutdown. And um, while we were shut down in prayer one day, I felt like God put on my heart that I was going to lead in, Sunday, in children's ministry. And I was like, yeah, I, I really think that's a good idea, God. In 10 years, when I've been, quali you know, when I'm qualified, when I've taught for 10 years and, and I've um, studied, I, I would absolutely love that. I, I feel that you're calling me to this, so I, I'm going to do what I can to be qualified for it. So, um, obviously, it didn't take 10 years, but I kept, as we were in lockdown, I kept feeling like he was giving me these little pictures, images, words um, that told me that I was going to lead in children's ministry. So I got the hint finally, and I, I said, yes, I feel like you're, you're going to call me into this earlier than I, I originally thought. So when the King of Kings gives you that job offer, you just say yes. So I said, I said yes, if this is something that you want me to do, then I will do this. And then um, not long after that, Pastor asked me to come over to dinner with, with his family, and I was like, oh, I think I know what this is about. And he asked me to lead in children's ministries, and I already knew the answer. I, I said I would pray about it, and I did pray about it, but I pretty much already knew that I was, gonna, I was going to lead in children's ministries. And um, so I said yes, and I got to that point, and then something happened once I got to that point, I, my shortcomings started coming up alongside of me, and they were saying, well, you know that there's teachers who have been teaching for longer than you've even been in church. And I was like, oh, you're right. And then, you know, my shortcomings said that there's teachers who were raised in apostolic truth and doctrine, and I was like, oh, you're right. And Brother Tony said something about this when he opened, um, that one out of the mouths of two or more the testimony is, I'm not saying that right, but, um, and so I was agreeing with my shortcomings. So then I, I turned over here and I said, well, strengths, what do you have for me? Because I have experience in leadership. So strengths, what do you, what do you have for me? And they were like, my strengths were like, well, you're really good at scheduling. And I was like, you're right. I am good at scheduling. I've been scheduling a lot of people since I was young enough to sit in youth. And now I'm not young enough to sit with hyphen. So I said, I'm good at that. So I said, okay, I can do that for, for children's ministries and leadership. And then I said, well, I'm also good at planning, so I can do that. So I just started walking down this path, being led by my strengths, not realizing that I was completely wrong. And um, I got to a point where I started to feel this heavy anxiety, and it made everything difficult. And the things that even I was good at, like scheduling and um, planning, I I was just struggling with it because it was almost like a physical weight that stopped me. Like it was like a weighted blanket, but not a comforting one. It was a very yucky one. So I I uh, was just like, God, what's going on? I can't 
I can't do these things that I need to do to run, you know, to lead in children's ministries. It's, I'm, you know, this anxiety is making it very hard. And um, it took me a little longer, and he would talk to me in different ways or give me messages in different ways, like call my attention to different things. But at one point, he, I felt like I was sharply drawn to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, if you can pull those up. And I almost felt like I could have gotten a spiritual whiplash because it was so like, look at this. <laughs> and um, did I give you that one? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Now I knew this verse, these verses, they were very familiar to me, but and I thought they were in my heart, but I guess they were just making guest appearances because otherwise I wouldn't have walked down this path on my own. So I repented of that, and I, I just I couldn't believe I had done that. I repented, and um, I just got to the business of just asking God to direct my path in all ways and trusting him that he would, he would lead me where he wanted me to go. And even if I didn't feel qualified, he would qualify me, you know, he would qualify me. So as I got back in line with, with where God wanted me to go, I started to think about where I was over here. And I started thinking how easy it would have been to just continue on that path because I didn't realize I didn't intentionally do the wrong thing. But I, it would have been so easy to stay on that path. And that anxiety, if I had kept that anxiety on, he would have continued to afflict me with it, it would have been so easy for me to just sit down and rest because it was, it was a struggle. It would have been so easy for me to just sit down and tell pastor that, you know, I can't do this because, or I not, I can't do this, but I can't do these extra things because I just feel so worn out. Or I can't do this because I feel worn out or whatever it is. And it would have just been so easy. And I felt like he God just gave me this thought that if I had continued down this path, I would have looked up. He gave me that 10 years again. I would have looked up in 10 years into the face of a 14-year-old Ellie or a 14-year-old Abram or 15-year-old Micaiah and realized that I had failed them because I had failed to be where God wanted me to be when he wanted me to be there, doing what he wanted me to do. And therefore, he wouldn't have been able to work through me in the way that he would desire to work through me. And I don't ever want him to reveal to me that I had failed any, any one of these kids. And as I was thinking about this, there was a verse that just changed the meaning for me. Um, Matthew nineteen fourteen. But Jesus said, Suffer little children and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And this was always one where I was like, well, this is easy. I would never be like, oh, Asher, don't go to Jesus. I love all of these kids, and I want all of them to be saved. And so I would never go and actively tell somebody not to come to Jesus. But as I was thinking of this and realizing what I had done, I, I realized that if I'm not walking and letting God direct my path in all ways, then I could unintentionally be stopping someone from coming to Jesus because there might be a word that God wants to give me to give to a child or a teacher, you know, minister to a teacher in the way that he wants me to minister to a teacher. And if I wasn't there to give that or for him to give me that, that message to, or to work through me in whatever way he wants to work through me, not for my glory, all for his glory, but if, if I'm not here walking his path that he wants me to walk, I, I might stop someone from coming to Jesus. And that was a heavy thing for me. I, I never want him, never want him to reveal that I stopped someone from coming to him because I didn't, I wasn't doing what he wanted me to do. So, yeah, it was, God 
it just helped me to always, always allow you to be the one that directs my path and not, not anything else, not anything else, not my shortcomings, not my strengths, not, nothing. And God is preparing our pastor to receive the harvest that God will surely bring. And as I think about that harvest and those children that will come with the harvest and the parents and the adults and just the people that will come, I know, I know how I was. I know I didn't know the voice of my shepherd when I first came to church. I know I needed God. I did not know his word, though. I didn't know the voice of my shepherd. And some of these people will, will not know the voice of their shepherd or they will not have been listening to their shepherd for a while. And they're going to need people to be able to allow God to work through them. And I, I just, I don't ever want to re- him, for him to reveal to me what was missed and the, who we have in our basket now and or who he intends on bringing. I don't want him to ever reveal that to me that something was missed because I was not where I wanted, where he wanted me to be. So. Pastor, that's... <laughs> 